Hello everyone. This model question is related with the solar flare. Now sometimes this concept is seen in news. The solar flare, sunspot, this kind of terms, terms frequently comes in news. And this particular question is regarding the the effects or the impact of solar flare. So going through the question, the solar flare occurs when the magnetic energy that has built up in the solar atmosphere is suddenly released. Right? Which of the following could possibly be the result or results of such an event? And we have been given three events like northern lights, electrical disruption, uh, hampering communication system. Now let's take a look at what is solar flare. Now solar flare means like you know this random burst of energy right now or the charged particles coming from the sun and that we call it as solar flare. As you can see here in this picture right, in these regions we are having the solar flare. Now the solar flare is sometimes the, the impact or like it's caused because of the sunspot. Okay, sunspot is a current affair related with geography and I have covered this topic sunspot in one of our videos. You can find the link of that video in the description below. Anyway, like you know, the uh, sunspot, it means like dark regions on the surface of the sun, right? So the, the sunspot, you know, it will look like this, you know, we'll be having dark spots on the surface of the sun. But doesn't mean like, you know, if you're having dark spots, don't think like, you know, the energy coming from the sun is less. Rather than this dark spot is due to the, like, you know, the burst of magnetic activity taking place during the, I mean, taking place in the surface of the sun. So that means more amount of charged particles, right, the electrons or like the charged particles coming from the sun will be increasing during this sunspot event, right. And during the sunspot, due to that uh, magnetic activity, the energy will be getting released in the form of solar flare. So the sunspot and solar flare, they're both uh, related together, I mean they're related and during the solar flare, we'll be having increased number of charged particles coming from the sun, okay. Now this, uh, I mean this charged particles coming from the sun, there is another term used to represent this which is solar wind, okay. So solar wind or the solar flare, they are almost similar and it means like you know the, the charged particles coming from the sun is increasing, right. And when they are coming towards the earth and if they could reach the earth's surface, right, it's very uh, harmful for the earth in the sense it can even wipe out the atmosphere. But luckily, we got the magnetic magnetosphere or the magnetic shield around the earth. Earth is acting as a magnet and for that reason, like you know, it, we are having the magnetic shield and the solar wind coming from the, the sun will get deflected, will get diverted from the equatorial region more towards the polar region. So all of the solar wind or the solar flare or the charged particles that diverted towards the, like you know, towards the, uh, the polar regions and the magnetic north pole as well as the magnetic south pole and this solar wind, the charged particles, it interacts with the ionosphere in the earth's atmosphere which is over towards the top, okay. And this ionosphere is having more ions, ions is same as that of the charged particles. So the charged particles coming from the sun interacting with the charged particles in the ionosphere will be creating the aurora formations and the terms you have to remember they are aurora borealis and aurora australis. Aurora means the sun will be appearing in different colors like you know as green or reddish or sometimes even violet okay and uh, these charged particles you know th these charged particles coming from the sun can disturb the communication systems right say the radio communication or the it can affect the space weather in the sense the way we communicate with the satellites you know the satellite communication the radio communication everything can be disturbed if you are having these charged particles coming towards the sun okay and even it's it can sometimes even hamper the electricity distribution right the power grid failure will is associated sometimes with the the incidences of solar wind and solar flare going back to the question uh, like you know which are which of the following could possibly be the result or results of such an event like the solar flare so solar flare means the burst of energy right uh, due to the magnetic activity taking place on the surface of the sun or, or the atmosphere of the sun and the northern lights right northern lights is another name used to represent the aurora borealis right the way to remember it is like the aurora borealis right it's on the northern hemisphere aurora australis right australia is over the southern hemisphere so you can relate it like that aurora australis over the southern hemisphere and aurora borealis over the uh, northern hemisphere like and aurora borealis is also called as northern lights and uh, aurora australis is also called as southern lights right so here the first statement the northern lights is associated with the solar flares 
and go into the options you can eliminate the option B and the second one electrical disruption I mean as I already said uh, I mean this, if you are having more solar flares coming to the surface, surface of the sun right it can hamper the like the power grid I mean it can result in power grid failures and thus can result in electrical disruption right again 2 is also correct and you know if you go into the options, we can eliminate all the options without 2 and which is also having 1 and in that case the answer comes out as D which is 1, 2 and 3 okay anyway going through the third one hampering communication system which is again true right so you have to remember that the the solar flare the energy I mean the charged particles coming from the sun can result or can affect the space weather it can affect the satellite communication like the electrical disruption or like it can cause the natural phenomena like you know weather events I mean natural atmospheric events like you know the northern lights as well as the southern lights so here the answer comes out as D which is 1 2 and 3 this model question is related with the concept of sustainable development sustainable development is an idea in recent years which has acquired more importance and this is an ABCD question one of them is correct and before going to sustainable development you have to keep in mind three main aspects of sustainable development there were times when we were giving importance only to development in the sense say creating infrastructure or like you know such developmental activities without considering environment like you know maybe it can it can result in deforestation like you know or like say the biodiversity loss so or such things and uh, one good example is that of the climate change like by burning the fossil fuels during the industrial revolution right we have resulted in large amounts of carbon dioxide piling up in our atmosphere and which in turn has resulted in global warming and thereby climate change now think about the climate change the impacts of climate change in order to solve that we need to spend the finance right on yeah, I mean on mitigating the impacts or like you know in adapting against the climate change now why this is there because in in our past we haven't considered like we didn't consider the the impact of such development on the environment so such an attaining such development without considering environment is not gonna be I mean it's not able to sustain for longer period of time okay such an development cannot be called as sustainable development so one base idea in sustainable development is environment or there is another way to put it in the sense you know uh, the development we are attaining right should be sustainable in the sense that shouldn't destroy the environment and it should be passing on the environment right the, I mean the resources and everything to the future generations as we found it right that's one of the base idea regarding the sustainable development and it doesn't mean to say like you know we are only giving importance to environment it's not the case right we are giving importance to economy but at the same time we are also giving importance to environment now another major pillar under the concept of sustainable development is the social aspect right the economic development we are attaining I mean it shouldn't be hampering the environment at the same time the benefits benefits of this such a development should be transferred to the community right I mean it should be having it should be helping out the the society okay so we are having three major pillars in like the sustainable development uh, economy environment and uh, the social community right so such a development by taking care of all these three pillars right and such a development we call it as the sustainable development and one another base idea regarding sustainable development is like you know the development should should be sustained and we should be passing on the environment and the resources as we found it to our like you know future generation it's more like you know showing uh, justice to our future generations now let's go back to the question uh, which of the following statements refer to the concept of the sustainable development now increasing per capita income so so as people's basic needs and requirements are reasonably fulfilled now if you go into the statement right increasing per capita income so it's taking consideration of like say economic aspects or you can say somewhat of uh, the societal aspect has been covered but not all the aspects of so sustainable development is been mentioned under the first two options so a is not correct and the uh, option b considering reduction in proposition of conventional energy resources that contribute to environmental pollution so this is regarding like you know reducing the dependency on conventional resources like say coal or any fossil fuels and that contribute to environmental pollution so the second statement is saying like the concept of sustainable development is related with you know shifting more towards the renewable resources and reducing the environmental pollution 
So it's covering only the environmental dimension. It's not giving any importance to say uh, the economy or the societal dimension, right? Anyway, the second statement is also not correct. And the th third statement, right? Bettering people's health, education, opportunities while ensuring a clean environment and intergenerational equity, right? Now, if we go through this uh, particular statement, bettering people's health, education, and opportunities. Now, it's taking care of the societal dimension. As well as, you know, like through opportunities, it is uh, considering the economical aspects, right? You know, creating inclusive growth, you know, cre creating more opportunities to offer all, right? Because of the development we are attaining. And plus, it's also talking about the clean environment and intergenerational equity, right? Now, if you go through this term, intergenerational. So that means, I mean, intergenerational equity. That means, like, you know, transferring like you know the the resources or the environment as we found it to our future generations or you can say showing justice to the future generations right that's the idea behind intergenerational equity now the way in which the third statement is being worded right it's taking consider i mean it's including like the societal aspect the economic aspect i mean since the word opportunities is there plus it's also considering the the environmental dimension right so this can be probably the answer, right? Anyway, let's take a look at the last statement, right? Adopting technology that does not impair the quality of environment. Again, it's limited to just the technology aspect as well as the environment. Now, this particular kind of question, I mean, the statements, you know, like they are all related with each other, right? And you will be having this kind of, you know, confusing statements coming for your UPC prelims examination. And in such scenarios, right? You have to make use of the options, right? You have to find the answer through the options, right? So, like comparing all the options, the option C is better conveying the idea behind the sustainable development since it's cover covering the multitude dimensions of sustainable development. It's covering both the environment, societal, as well as the economic aspects of the sustainable development. And uh, this refers to the concept of sustainable development, right? So, here, I mean, when comparing with all the other options, like the option C is is discussing or is referring to the concept of sustainable development. So, answer comes out as C. And related with this concept, that right, the sustainable development, one current affair which is in news is like, you know, or one important area, right, which you have to keep in mind is the 17 sustainable developmental goals, right. So, the picture is being given here. So, make sure you go through the, all the 17 uh, development SDG goals. I'm not reading them out. Make sure which of these aid, I mean, which of these uh, missions are under or goals are under the SDG goals. In recent years, we are having more map-based questions coming for your prelims examination, and these regions or the places they're not randomly selected, right? If you go through all the options, those places, say countries, nations, or like you know, say cities, those kind of regions which are in news, there is high probability that you can ask questions based on those places or cities which are in news okay so this is a current affair question right i mean the all of these places they are in news and uh, like you know this question is asking you to arrange these cities in the west asia from west to east now all the reason right the west asian region they they are frequently in news because of i mean it's a conflict ridden region because of civil war and all the issues going on in those regions right and the war going on in this region and this region right they all are in news like Mosul, Raqqa, Aleppo, and Damascus, right? And you have to arrange these states as, as, as one proceeds from west to east, okay? So, if you're going through the map, we'll find out that the Damascus is towards the westernmost region when comparing all the other three regions, okay? And then comes the Aleppo, which is in Syria, then the Raqqa, which is again also in Syria, and Mosul, which is the capital city of Iraq, okay and all the all the four regions they are in news because of the their conflict ridden regions right so the order should come out as like it should start out i mean it should start with damascus then aleppo then raqqa and Mosul, right now going to the options damascus is given as the fourth option right so the correct answer should be starting with four okay so you can eliminate b as well as c and like you know going to the options either you can consider say aleppo or Mosul. If you remember the Mosul is towards the, like, you know, towards the east, I mean, when comparing with all the other four places given here, all the other three places given here, Mosul is more towards the east, right? So, it should be starting with four and it should be ending with one, right? And going by that, the answer should come out as D, which is four, three, two, one. 
say Damascus, Aleppo, Raqqa, as well as Mosul. So here the an correct answer is actually D. This model question is also related with the current affair or the region which is found in news, right? The Wakan Corridor is a narrow strip of inhospitable and barely accessible land populated by the nomadic tribe Wakanis, known, also known as families in Afghanistan, right? So in this context, Wakan Corridor is like bordered by which of the following countries? So this is a question related with this particular concept, I mean particular region, Wakan Corridor, right? And it was in news because the China is developing I mean China is developing the infrastructure through this region so that it can connect with the Afghans and other region. So you have to keep in mind which of which are the regions that are sharing uh, boundary with the Wakan corridor. As I said this region sharing boundary with say Afghanistan, uh, Tajikistan, China as well as Pakistan and uh, this region right they are not under the ownership of I mean under the control of any of the government. So it's an uh, inhospitable land, right? No, none of the conflict is going on through this region. And you have to, uh, another specific geographical region which is close by to this Wakan corridor is a Palmer node, right? So Palmer node, this is India and the Himalayas and here we are having the Palmer node, right? The confluence of two, I mean three major mountain ranges, the Himalayan ranges. So if you are going through a physiographic, physiographical map, you will be able to find Palmer Nord somewhere towards the Western Himalayas, above the Western Himalayas, right? So, Wakan Corridor is accessible through the, I mean, through the Palmer Nord, right? That means, I mean, it's in current affair, as I said before, it's in current affair because China is developing a road, uh, I mean, infrastructure development or road through which it can connect the, the Afghanistan, right? So, it should be either, I mean, should be having boundary with the China as well as Afghanistan. And one another region you have to uh, keep in mind is Tajikistan, right? And it's also sharing boundary with uh, Pakistan. Further, you have to remember it's not having boundary with India. Okay. Now, going back to the question, I mean, uh, the one fact which is already given in the question is Wakan Corridor is an inhospitable land, and uh, the tribe which is found over these regions, they are nomadic in nature, and the name for them is Palmeries in Afghanistan, right? Can be related with the Palmer Nord. Okay. Now, the regions sharing boundary with the Wakan Corridor, right? Afghanistan and in option you can find Tajikistan, Pakistan as well as China, right? All four is actually having boundary with the Wakan Corridor and the answer here comes out as D which is 1, 2, 3 and 4. Related with international relations, those are strategic important places which are in news. It can be say cities or it can be geographical features or sometimes it can be ports. Okay, so all of these regions or say islands in news, they can expect questions based on all these things which are in news, right? And in this aspect, since China is exerting more influence or over the Indian Ocean, we have covered one another video regarding the ports which are having Chinese influence in the Indian Ocean, right? Now this model question is related with the, the strategically important, I mean important ports which are developed by India in the Indian Ocean, right? So, the three ports which are discussed here, they are Dukum, Agalaya as well as the Assumption Island, okay. And on, this is a pair type of question and on one side, I mean, we have been given these ports and we have to find out which of, I mean, these ports are belonging to which of the ports, right. So, India is actually developing all these three ports in, I mean, in association with these nations, okay. Now, let's take a look at each of these ports. So, Dukum is in like the Oman, like uh, which is nearby to this Strait of Hormuz in the Indian Ocean, right? And this region is important for this year's prelims examination since the Saudi Arabia, Yemen was frequently in news. And Oman was in news because of this one particular port and uh, as a way of countering the influence of the Chinese influence in Indian Ocean, right? We are developing this particular port, Dukum port, in association with the Oman government, right? So, Dukum is in Oman. And the other two options were like in the Assumption Island and Mauritius, right? I mean, like uh, the Agalaya Islands. So the Agalaya Islands is part of the Mauritius and the Assumption Island is part of the Seychelles, right? So, uh, like, you know, this is also against towards, towards the Western Indian Ocean regions, which India is developing this strategically important port, right? Which, I mean, through which we can access all of these regions. Anyway, let's go back to the question. So the ports which are in news like Dukum, Agalaya, Assumption Island and here you can find the Agalaya Island is being paired with the seashell but going by the picture like you know, it's related with the Mauritius. So the second option 
is wrong and you know, eliminating the second option from the given options right you can I mean you'll understand that like you know A and C is left and the first one right Vikram is in Oman which is correct and the third one right the Assumption Island is marked with the Mauritius but it's not Mauritius rather than it's Seychelles. So like you know the here the answer comes out as A which is one only. In most of the pair type of questions right you will be able to uh, correctly pair the given options right. I'm not saying all the pair type of question but in most of the pair type of questions like around 80 to 90 percentage of the all pair type of questions the the correct answer for one particular pair will be there in the answer itself. So if you know say Assumption Island which is frequently in news more than the Agalaya, so you will be able to identify that Assumption Island is not in Mauritius rather than it is in Seychelles right. So if you understood that there is high probability that the second option can also be wrong okay. So make sure if you are trying elimination methods right you know without knowing two statements or you are taking a guess at you know, by knowing just one statement make sure you uh, think from these aspects right. So here the answer comes out as one only the Dukum is correctly paired with the Oman. Hello everyone, today's model question is regarding solar and lunar eclipse. Now since this is a periodic event, this is seen in news and for that reason you can expect a question based on this for your prelims examination. Now before going to the question, as always, let's take a look at what is solar and lunar eclipse. So first of all, what is the term eclipse, right? I mean since we are having lunar as well as solar eclipse. Sometimes, you know, you can get confused with both of those concepts, right? For that, I mean, in order to tide over that particular difficulty, you have to remember what is eclipse. Now, eclipse means if a celestial body, the visibility of a celestial body is being blocked, and that we call it as eclipse, right? In the sense, you know, the light coming from, be it any celestial body, the light coming from that is being blocked by some other object, and that we call it as eclipse, right? Now, there are two terms the solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse. Solar means the term is related with sun, right? So the visibility of the sun is being blocked, okay? And the sun will appear blacker. And in the case of lunar eclipse, the visibility of the moon will be blocked and the moon will appear either reddish or, you know, it will be appearing as blackish, okay? So that's what we mean by the term solar eclipse as well as lunar eclipse, right? Now let's take a look at how these phenomena is taking place. Interplay of three objects, the sun, moon as well as the earth results in the lunar as well as the solar eclipse. So let's start with the uh, lunar eclipse. As I said, like during the lunar eclipse, the moon will be appearing darker or reddish. Now imagine that, you know, if the moon has to be in a block, right? The light coming to the moon has to be blocked. There is only one possibility. The earth has to come in between the sun as well as the moon. So during the lunar eclipse, like when the moon is revolving around the earth, what happens is that earth will come in between the sun as well as the moon. So the light coming to the moon, right, will be blocked by the earth. Okay. And the shadow will be falling onto the moon resulting in the lunar eclipse. Right? And in the case of solar eclipse, as I said, like there are three objects, again in the sense during the solar eclipse, the sun will be, the visibility of the sun will be, you know, blocked. Now, if you are view, if you are viewing from the earth, this, if the sun has to be blocked, there is only one chance, the moon has to come in between the sun as well as earth. Right? So, during the solar eclipse, the sun will be, the visibility, I mean the light from coming from the sun will be blocked, right? And uh, as I shown before, right, the, the sun will appear blackish. So you have to remember this, during the lunar eclipse, the earth is in between sun as well as moon. And during the solar eclipse, the moon is in between sun and earth. Now since this topic, like, you know, they are interrelated, it's better to remember what is eclipse and you can interrelate those concepts, right? Now let's go back to the uh, question. So, it's a two statement question. The first one, during solar eclipse, the earth is in between the sun and the moon. Whereas during lunar eclipse, the moon is in between the sun as well as earth. Now, if you go through this, during solar eclipse, in the sense the, the sun is appearing black, I mean blackish, right? And the light coming from the sun can only be blocked by the moon. So, here in this statement, it's given like the earth is in between the sun as well as moon, which is wrong. So, and the second part of the statement, right? the second part of the first statement, whereas during the lunar eclipse, the moon is in between the sun as well as earth. Actually, it sh should have been like, you know, the other way. So there are only, only two words which are wrongly given here in the statement, like uh, instead of the earth here, it should have been moon and instead of the moon there, the it should have been the earth. 
Anyway, the first statement is wrong. Now, going to the second statement. During the solar eclipse, the moon appears darker and sometimes reddish. And whereas, during lunar eclipse, the sun appears darker, which is again wrong, right? During solar eclipse, right? Eclipse itself, the sun should be appearing blackish, right? Or darker, you can say. And for that reason, the second statement is also wrong. And uh, the answer comes out as D, which is neither one nor two. With around 25 days left for your prelims examination, this is a time where you have to give more importance to your revision as well as, you know, the question solving. So make sure you, you are solving as many as, you know, questions, both the previous questions as well as the, the model questions, right? Either a test series or any other test series. So make sure you are solving as many as uh, model questions and you are revising whatever you have studied so far. So don't be worried that you know you have less left out any particular topic. Uh, make sure you, you are not going behind you know such topics rather than stick with the revision right stick with whatever you have studied so far. Make sure you are revising those topics thoroughly and you are solving questions related with those topics. This model question is regarding the factors which influence the distribution of temperature in oceans. Here you can find four options have been given here and we have to find out which of them influence the distribution of uh, temperature in oceans. The first one, ocean currents. Now, ocean currents, there are two kinds of, generally there are two kinds of ocean currents, warm current and cold current. So, if you are having the warm water, right, I mean, the, if you are having warm current, that means the ocean water will become warm, in the sense, the warm water will be flowing through the, flowing as the warm current. So, the first one is obviously influencing the distribution of the ocean currents, I mean, distribution of the temperature in the oceans. As you can find, like, you know, in places where we are having uh, warm ocean temperatures, I mean, warm ocean currents, those regions will be having more temperature. For example, right, in all the continents, on the western margin, we are having cold ocean current, and on the eastern margin, we are having warm ocean current, right? So, in this picture, you can see that, like, this region, right, which is having less temperature, is slightly tilted towards the equator region, meaning that here we are having the cold oceanic current, and the temperature of the ocean is cold. At the same time, on the eastern margin, at the same latitude, right, the temperature is higher, meaning that there we are having the warm ocean currents. So, obviously, the first one is there. So, we can eliminate the option D and the second one, prevailing wind. Now, the warm ocean current as well as prevailing wind, they are going together. In the sense, if you are having, I mean, those regions where we are having the movement of wind, in the sense, for example, consider the trade wind. Okay. Again, coming back to the picture, in this picture, we can find... I mean, if you're, if you're thinking about the trade wind, uh, the, the direction in which the trade wind is blowing, those directions will be having the warm current. For example, right, if you consider the African region, uh, from the eastern coast of this Atlantic region towards the western coast of the Atlantic, we are having the trade wind. So, the tra generally the trade wind blows from east to west. So, though what happens is that when the winds are blowing, the warm water in the surface of the ocean will be carried along with this wind. For that reason, the direction in which the wind is blowing, right, the onshore wind, those coasts, right, those coastal regions having the onshore winds, they will be having more warmer temperature in the ocean. This can be found in various other regions, for example, say, uh, British Isle regions, where we are having uh, the North Atlantic drift moving towards the British Isle regions. As you can find here, the British Isle regions are comparatively warmer when compared with the nearby uh, European regions, right, because we are having the onshore moving uh, Westerly prevailing winds here. So anyway, like 1 and 2 should be there in the answer. For that reason, we can again eliminate the option C. Okay. Now the third one, unequal, unequal distribution of land and water. Now you, here you should understand that the land is having more capacity to absorb insulation or the energy coming from the sun. For that reason, the land region will be much warmer when compared with the ocean, always, right? And what happens, not always, right, it depends on the season and daytime and nighttime, but mostly on a general scale, what happens is that the northern hemisphere is more warmer when compared with the ocean because we are having more landmass distributed in the northern hemisphere. For that reason, the oceans in the northern hemisphere having contact with this landmass, right, more landmass in the northern hemisphere, they can say that the oceans in the northern hemisphere is also having warmer. Right, so the distribution of land and water, obviously, I mean, the unequal distribution of land and water actually controls the distribution of temperature. Uh, I mean, regarding this, you have to keep in mind the northern hemisphere is having, uh, I mean, the oceans in the northern hemisphere is having more temperature when compared with the southern hemisphere. Now, the fourth one, right, so from that itself, we'll understand that the answer is B, which is 1, 2, and 3. Again, the fourth one, rotation of the earth. 
Now the rotation of the earth is not directly influencing the uh, the distribution of the temperature in the oceans, right? We can relate it with coronal force or something, but again, it's not directly influencing the distribution of temperature. So these are the three factors which can influence the distribution of temperature in the oceans. Now the next question, it's a two statement question regarding the latitudes and the longitudes. Now the di distance between two longitudes decreases towards the poles. Distance between two longitudes decreases towards poles. Longitude means they are the, uh, the vertical line drawn between, I mean drawn through North Pole and South Pole, right? All longitudes, they pass through North Pole and South Pole, okay? And in the first statement, like the distance between two longitudes decreases towards poles. That means both the longitudes, they are meeting each other in two points, North Pole and South Pole. It means the distance between two longitudes, they decrease as we progress towards the poles. So that reason, the first, for that reason, the first statement is true. Now the second one, the distance between two latitudes increases slightly towards the poles. Now here going to this statement, right, we, we have found that like the, the latitudes or we know that the latitudes, they are the horizontal lines, they are parallel to each other, they are not meeting uh, each other, right. Unlike the longitude which meet in North Pole and South Pole, the latitude they are not meeting each other. But if you if you can if you go towards the Northern Pole, for the, I mean what happens is that the distance between two latitudes they slightly decrease. Now how we can correlate this in the sense the Earth is not a perfect sphere and towards the I mean as it approaches towards the North Pole and South Pole, what happens is that it is getting compressed. For that reason, like the distance between two latitudes. I mean, it's slightly decreasing, but there, is, there isn't a large distance between two, I mean, the distance between two lati latitudes, they're not decreasing into a larger extent, rather than they're decreasing very slightly, okay, because the Earth is not a perfect sphere, right? So, for that reason here, the answer comes out as B, which is both 1 and 2, both of the statements he given here are correct. Now, the another, uh, I mean, pair type of question, so this is a not correct based question, we have to find out which of the uh, I mean, it's actually an ABC kind of question, right? We have to understand which of the given pairs is uh, not correctly matched. Now, the, uh, on one side we can find the glaciers and the other side there are the regions being given here, right? Now, in recently like a certain glaciers were in news. So, this question is made upon uh, these glaciers which were in news and the general glaciers which you can find in uh, India, right? So, going through the option, the Nubra Glacier is in actually uh, like is in Jammu and Kashmir and like the Bara Singri is in actually the Himachal Pradesh. You have to go through this uh, particular picture and you have to keep in mind, you have to, like, I, you should be able to identify the glaciers and their regions, right? And the, and the third one, Ratong, right? Ratong is matched against the Uttarakhand. In fact, the Ratong Glacier is actually in the Sikkim, not in the Uttarakhand. For that reason, the uh, th third option is actually the correct answer because the question is regarding not correctly matched. So here, answer comes out as C, right? And uh, Kangdo Glacier, again, which is in the Arunachal Pradesh. So make sure you keep this in mind. You can, since you know, recently we are having more map-based questions, you can expect questions based on glaciers and such things, okay? Next question, in Africa, Right, equator passes through which of the following given countries? So the question is regarding uh, two aspects. One, we have to uh, identify like in the equator, the country through which the equator passes through, and then we have to keep in mind in Africa. Right, the question is regarding the countries in Africa. So going through the options: Kenya, Somalia, Ecuador, and Kiribati. Now, without and I mean, if you if you read the question properly, you'll understand that the question is regarding Africa, right? Kiribati is actually a Polynesian island. It's not. It's in the Pacific Ocean, and it's not part of Africa. And going through the options, if you can eliminate or if you can identify Kiribati, right? Kiribati is an important island for this year's preliminary examination since it was in news. I mean, uh, regarding with related to the climate change, right? The sea level rise due to the sea level rise, the Kiribati, Fiji Islands, Marshall Islands, certain islands are under threat. It was given out or it was specified in IPCC's report, right? For that reason, the Kiribati is important. So anyway, like if you could eliminate the fourth option from the given options, you'll understand that the answer comes out as A, which is one and two only, right? Kenya and Somalia is A, I mean, is in Africa and through which the equator is passing through, right? And the next question. 
So here in this picture, you can find uh, the Ecuador is passing through. In South America, it's passing through Ecuador, Colombia, and Brazil. Again, in the question, you can find Ecuador, right, which, which is not in Africa, right? Then in Africa, like, you know, these are the given nations through which the Ecuador, Ecuador is passing through. And in Asia and Ocean, we are having Maldives, Indonesia, and Kiribati, right? We are also having, uh, I mean, uh, these are the countries through which the Equator passes through. Anyway, the next question, like this is regarding the factors which influence the distribution of the location of like the iron and steel industry, right? I mean, this is more important for your mains examination, right? This one particular, like the distribution of the different industries, right? It's very important for your mains. And regarding the prelims, you can expect, say, one, one or two questions regarding the distribution of industries. Uh, from iron and steel industry, we have we are already having a mains question, and that's why uh, I have made this question for your prelims examination. I mean, for your PMDs, right? Anyway, the going through the options, cheap power, the accessibility to market, limestone region, and coal mines have been given here. Now, you have to keep in mind, I mean, you have to understand that, like, you know, the first one, cheap power and accessibility to market, which is a common factor which is needed for all the, okay, or most of the location of the industries, right? Especially, like, the, I mean, uh, with iron and steel industry, we need more power to melt it and to transportation and such things, you know, accessibility to market should be there as well as we need the cheap power, right? Plus, in the case of iron and steel industry, we need certain ingredients which are specific for the iron and steel industry, right? Then one such specific in, uh, ingredient is actually limestone. So limestone is needed for the smelting and related process, uh, I mean, associated with the iron and steel industry, right? So the iron and steel industry will be related with, I mean, in regions where we can find limestone so that the raw materials will be easily available, right? And the fourth one, coal mine. Now, in order to melt the iron ore and related process, we need the accessibility to power. I mean, if you understood that cheap power is needed, then we can correlate like it with the coal mines itself, right? So, mostly in India's case, like, you know, the industries, they are located towards where we can find more the coal mines and the related uh, raw materials needed for the iron and steel industry, right? So, in this, uh, I mean, in this particular question, the answer comes out as D, which is 1, 2, 3, and 4. All the factors given here, which determine the, I mean, the location of, I mean, which influences the location of iron and steel industries.